Hi, I'm Brooke Glazer, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use my coloring pages in the iPad app Procreate. Coloring digitally is a whole new experience. You can change colors easily, add fun textures, and if you make a mistake, you just tap to undo it. The coloring page I'm using is available for free on my website at brookglazer.com. There's a link in the description of this video, and there's many more Procreate-friendly coloring pages there too. If you're new to Procreate and want to learn more, I highly recommend checking out my Intro to Procreate class. In this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know to get started, but the class covers even more fun tools and tricks that the app has to offer. Let's get started with our coloring sheet open in Procreate. To move around the canvas, pinch two fingers in and out to zoom. To rotate the canvas, simply twist those two fingers. What if, oops, you accidentally make a mark that you don't want? No problem, that's the beauty of digital art. You can undo it. So take two fingers and tap on the screen to undo the last thing that you did. Change your mind, tap three fingers to redo it and bring it back on. Two fingers to undo, three fingers to redo. Now these symbols over here are our tools. We've got the brush tool, the smudge tool, the erase tool, the layers tool, and the color tool. We'll cover all of these, but the first one I wanna show you is the layers panel. So the layers panel is very cool. The very bottom layer of every single canvas is the background color. And if you tap on the thumbnail, this white thumbnail right here, it's going to bring up the color panel. And the color panel is really cool and you can just slide around in here and choose a totally different color for your background. Now you can use the disc to choose your colors. You can use the classic or the value. I like to use the classic and I just go along here to choose different colors as a rainbow. And then I can move in this area to choose what, how bright or dark or saturated I'd like that color to be. For now, I'm going to keep our background fully white. The next thing I wanna do is show you how to add a layer. Let's come back to our layers panel and I'm going to tap on the plus icon to add a new layer. Now, when I come and draw on the canvas, I'm drawing on a new layer. Ugh, that looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? Well, here comes the cool part. When I reopen the layers and I tap and hold on this layer, you'll notice that it kind of pops up. That means now I can drag and drop the layer underneath of my outlines. And check it out, now I can actually see what I'm doing. Pretty cool, right? So I could come in here and use my eraser to tidy up my lines. Just remember, it matters what layer you're on. If I was on my outline layer, and I can tell which layer I'm on because it's the blue one, if I was on my outline layer and I tried to use the eraser tool, well, then I'd be erasing my outline and I don't wanna do that. Another useful thing to know about the brushes is that this lighter right here controls the size of your brush. So if it's all the way up, it's gonna be a really big brush size. And if it's really small, like let's say you wanna color in these sprinkles, if I make it smaller, then it makes a smaller mark. Some more fun facts, if I tap on the brushes, you'll discover that there are just tons of all kinds of really cool brushes, and they do all kinds of different things. For example, I'm using the Studio Pen in the inking tab, and if I press really lightly, I get a very small line, but if I push harder, I get a bigger line. Another one of my favorites is the pencil. So in sketching, I go to pencil. If I draw upright like this, I get a fine line, but if I draw on the side of the pencil, it acts like a real pencil. You know, when you shade on the side of that pencil, you get those kinds of marks. So the tilt of your pencil and the pressure that you use can change the way the brushes work, which is really, really cool. As much as I'd like to be a tidy person, I'm just not. Have you ever gone bowling and you can put in these bumpers which prevent your ball from going in the gutter? Procreate has a really cool tool that's similar to that and it helps you stay inside of the lines. In the layer panel, I'm going to choose my outline layer and I want to fill in my ice cream over here. So I'm going to choose a nice pink color because I wanted this to be strawberry ice cream. And if I drag this color circle over to my ice cream and drop it there, and check it out, now I have strawberry ice cream and it stays inside the lines. This is called color drop and it works because this shape is fully enclosed. For example, let's say I draw a circle like this and try and color drop. Well, that didn't work, it just filled the entire area over here. And that's because this shape is not fully enclosed. So if I enclose that shape by closing the lines there and drop in, now it will just fill in that shape. Well, what if you try and color drop on a shape and it fills the entire canvas, even though it's fully enclosed? Well, that can happen sometimes if your color threshold is too high. 
what you'll wanna do is grab your color and drop it on the canvas, but do not pick up your pencil. And what you'll see is there's this blue bar right here and a color drop threshold percentage. If I move my pen to the right or left on the canvas, it's going to change the numbers on there, it's going to change the blue bar, and it's gonna change how much it's dumping color onto the canvas. So if you are getting too far with the color, grab your color and move it to the left until it's only filling the amount of space that you actually intend for it to do. In general, it's really useful to have different layers for colors which are touching each other. For example, I wanna color in these chocolate chips and these sprinkles. So it's helpful to have my ice cream color on a separate layer. But a new layer is blank, and if I try to color drop on those, it just fills in the entire empty layer. Well, I've got another useful tool for you. First, we'll tap on the outline layer, and from the menu that pops up, you're gonna to wanna to choose reference. I'll know that reference is turned on because it says reference under this layer. Now I'll create a new layer and put it underneath of the outlines. With my new layer selected, and again, I can tell it's selected because it's blue, I'm going to drag and drop my color and ta-da! This time it works, it fills in the ice cream. The reason this is happening is because Procreate is referencing this reference layer to color drop on different layers. If I didn't have reference on, it would just fill the empty parts of that layer. I can also use this to fill in the hands over here. And because these hands are above the ice cream cone layer, they are on top of it. So I don't even have to worry about erasing those areas where the ice cream cone was over the fingers. I'm gonna add a new layer and add some bright red nail polish to these fingernails. Once you're done dropping in your color, I highly recommend that you come in and turn off this reference layer. So if I tap on the layer, I can click on reference again with the check mark there and it will turn it off. I can tell it's off because it doesn't say reference anymore. Reference layer is awesome and powerful, but it can force funny, unexpected things to happen when you don't mean to be using it. So definitely make sure that you turn it off when you're done using it. Now, what was the whole point of that? Why not just color drop on the outlines? Well, the whole point of putting these ice cream colors on a new layer is that I wanna show you another cool way to color your art. I could come in and just manually try and color in the chocolate chips over here. But what if I could just draw with the lines and not have to worry about going outside of them? Well, I can do this with alpha lock. There are two ways that you can turn on alpha lock. The first is if you tap on the layer and you choose alpha lock from the menu. The second way is to take two fingers and swipe right on the layer you'd like to turn alpha lock on. You can tell that a layer has alpha lock on because it'll have this white and gray checkerboard in the thumbnail. Now, when I come to color in my chocolate chips here, it stays inside of the lines. How cool is that? I can even add a shiny part to the nail polish over here. So let's say I wanna make it a lighter pink to make the nails look kind of shiny. And now I've got shiny nails. This is also really useful for creating shading. So I'm going to go to my ice cream layer. I'm gonna use two fingers to turn on the alpha lock. And then I'm going to choose a darker orange color. And I will also go into the sketching and I'll choose an artistic crayon to get a really cool textured brush. And if I come in here with that brush, I can't draw outside of the lines. I'm only staying inside of the lines where I already drew the ice cream cone and I can create this cool shading and, and texture on the ice cream cone. What if you change your mind about the color you've used? There's several fun ways to change the color, but one of my favorites is the recolor tool. Let's say I wanna change this to a strawberry again. First, I'll make sure that I'm on the layer of my ice cream color, and then I will choose the color that I want to use and drag it and drop it on there. And ta-da, it changed it to strawberry. Isn't that awesome? But maybe I'm not sure about this color of pink. Maybe I want it to be a darker pink. When you come and drag and drop colors on, a little box up here will pop up that says continue filling with recolor. And you'll need to move quickly because it only stays there for a few seconds. But if you tap that box, oh my gosh, it ruins the whole painting. Why did I have you do that? Well, what really happens here is that a cross hatch right here shows up. And if you drag and move that crosshatch onto the area that you want to have your color in, then you're gonna go to the color panel over here, and now you can come in and choose any color that you like. So maybe you want it to be 
blue or maybe you want it to be green, you know, any color that you like. So you can move it around in here. It's, it's very flexible. Once you're happy with the color that you've chosen, tap the brush icon to exit the tool. I hope this tutorial taught you some fun tricks for using your coloring sheets in Procreate. And if you'd like to get the coloring sheet I used in this tutorial and lots more, don't forget to check out my website, brookglazer.com. And if you'd like to learn more about Procreate, I highly recommend my Intro to Procreate class, which walks you through all the tips and tricks. If you post your art to Instagram, I'd love to see it. Use the hashtag drawwithbrook. I can't wait to see what you create. If you liked this video, please subscribe for more tutorials and check out one of my other videos.